guys, guys, championship rounds. Your boy Marcel Pierre. Dr. Matt's here. The doc. The doc, you know. Anyways, moving along. You know, who gives a f- They're just playing, Matt. Anyways, Dr. Matt's <laughs> here with me, and we're talking about the dark horse of the featherweight division. The UFC featherweight division. That's 145. The dark horse is one whom hails from England. Nobody's talking about him. Everybody's like Patty Pimblett. Patty Pimblett. They wanted they wanted Darren Till to be the next Michael Bisbing. But you know what? You know who the real guy with the most potential coming up uh, out of the UK across the pond? It's fucking Arnold Allen. Arnold Allen, who is undefeated, not a blemish on this guy's record, not a damn blemish, and the knock on him. And I'm talking about his record inside of the UFC, so don't 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 hit me with no cage warrior shit, because I don't give a fuck. I'm talking <laughs> about the UFC, and the knock on him was that he doesn't fight often. But who gives a damn when you're fighting? Whenever you fight, you fight, you win, you win, you fucking win, and you and you look good doing it. So, Doctor Matt. I'm just going to let you know that, you know, bring you back up to speed that his last fight was against Calvin Cater. Calvin Cater injured his knee, but Calvin Cater was about to get that ass beat, man. Let's let's just go ahead and take it for what it is. Matt, how high do you feel like Arnold Allen's ceiling is? How high is the damn roof? What are his hey. upper bound limits? I feel like Arnold Allen could jump up at lightweight right now and walk through most of the top ten. Man, he's a big ass featherweight, isn't he? Go ahead, yeah, though. Talk yeah. to him. Uh, he's a beast, bro. You can't hurt that dude. I mean, yeah, uh, you don't want to get hit by him. He put his sleep somebody. Didn't he sleep hooker like real bad? Man, one of man. The- you know, it was one of those. It was one of those fights where you're like, man, you know, is it time for Hooker? You know, even though he's had other fights like that, but you know, go ahead though. I'm not trying to cut off the doctor. Dude's a fucking Viking, bro. <laughs> huh? He might whoop this thing. I mean, well, you were just you were just singing praises at to Alexander Volkanovsky and, and his chances going up to to lightweight, and now you're saying that Arnold Allen. Could walk up to lightweight right now and walk through guys. Like, man, make it make sense, man. How high do you feel like the roof is for Arnold Dam Allen? I think Volkanovski's running from 145 because <laughs> he don't want none on Arnold Allen. You think, you think Volkanovski's trying to do what, you know, trying to get that champ champ status before Arnold does? Because I don't think Arnold's long for 145 pounds. Like you said, he was he's a humongous featherweight. Uh, he comes up to 155. He ain't gonna have no problems either. If I was him, I'd pull a Connor. I'd I'd get that belt. Go over there and see what I can do at 155. I don't know. Him and Islam sounds like a better matchup now that I think about it than in Islam. Well, let's just well let's just break this down. You got. You got uh let's break that let's break down Arnold Allen's UFC career really fast. And we're gonna skip a few fights. We're gonna go to the more notable fights. He did have a split decision win early on. This was his second his third fight rather in the UFC. And it was against Maquan Ameri- Americani, Mr. Finland. And then he strangled Mads Brunel. Skip a fight. He defeated by unanimous decision, a very seasoned but washed. Gilbert Melendez, he unanimous decisioned Nick Lentz, who's also long in the tooth. He defeated Sadiq Youssef, who is a tough out. Is is he elite? We'll see. Tough out, though. Good fighter. But then he disgustingly defeated Dan Hooker, and I feel like he was on his way to doing the same to Calvin Cater. We, we won't know. All respect to Calvin Cater, we won't know. But, man... This guy's got some fucking potential. Who you got? Do you think? Do you think? This is the question. This is the. This is really the question I wanted to bring up to the doctor. You, Doctor Matt. You know what I mean? Who do you think has? And just don't be a homer. 
You know, don't be a homer. Like, if if, if you feel like there's other there other there's other elements to this shit, then how good can you fight? There's other elements to it. Oh, so, yeah. with that being said, who do you think really has the biggest upper bound limits? Who's fucking ceilings higher? Who is the who's whose roof is higher? Who's gonna have the most longevity inside of the the mothership, the UFC? And I'm talking about and from the UK because obviously Darren Till is a fight away from being out the door. So who has the most longevity? Arnold Allen. Um, hold, on, hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Arnold Allen. Or Patty the Batty Pimblet. Oh man, Patty's been exposed. Oh, that one would smash Patty. A Leon Edwards. You know, is you, a know you know, it's funny because they're both fighting at fucking featherweight, bro. Patty Pimblet and Arnold Allen are both fighting at featherweight. They're both from across the pond. I ask you again, Matt. Stop running away from the question. Whom has the 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 most long? Who, who do you think has the most longevity? In the in the in the highest roof, the highest ceiling, in the USC, the fucking mothership, Arnold Allen, or Patty the Batty Pimblet. We know who's more popular right now. We know who we think is the better fighter right now. But Doctor Matt, who sticks around longer? Uh probably Arnold Allen. And why do you say that? He's got more to gain. Patty on the outside gains too much weight in between fights. He ain't going to be able to keep dropping all that. So he'll sooner or later have to either move up or move out. So I just see all around. I completely agree with you. And this is no hate on Patty Pimblet. Patty Pimblet has done nothing but win since he's been in the UFC. Yeah, it got dicey in his last fight. And you can take that for what it was. But as he said, he's got the green mark. And you can suck his ass if you think otherwise. Anyways. <laughs> Anyways, but at the end of the day, the the trajectory of Arnold Allen after getting a win, although it might not have been pretty, against the likes of Calvin Cater, his traje- trajectory to the title is a lot fucking closer than that of Patty Pimblett's. Patty Pimblett has w- way more popularity. Way more. You don't think the UK is going to get behind Arnold Allen? Arnold Allen, if they already or if they already haven't been, if he gets anywhere close to a title shot, please believe they will be in the stands singing "Sweet Fucking Caroline" if this motherfucker fights for the title, and it will be a yeah. massive event. You know, we just had Leon Edwards from across the pond realize the championship. They went fucking nuts, but at the end of the day, I humbly, in my humble opinion. I believe Arnold Allen is the better fighter. I believe he is the more well-rounded fighter. I believe he's a fighter that has shown himself to be more, what's the word? I don't want to say intelligent in the cage. I want to say he's more methodical. He's more of a, I'm going to hit you and you're not going to hit me. I'm not just coming in here wild trying to land one. You know what I mean? My, My defense... My, my defense system and my defense mechanisms seem educated. I'm not keeping my head on the center line. I'm moving my feet. I'm not circling into the power. You know, just stuff like that. And for that... And, yeah, yeah. And, and like I said, he's, 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 he's fighting guys, you know, that'll get him to a belt. I'm sorry. Respect to Jared Gordon, but Jared Gordon ain't going to get you to a belt. And none of those other guys he fought, Patty Pimblett being, are either. They know he's green. They know he's green. And, and it's crazy because Patty Pimble is like nearing 30 fucking fights at this point. He's got more fights. He's got more fights than Arnold Allen. Fighting in the same weight class as Arnold Allen. But he's fighting guys that are not going to get him to a championship while Arnold Allen is. Make it make sense. They just baby in their star because he brings in more money. That's that's pretty much what they're doing. Yeah, you know, like you said, nobody's talking about Arnold Allen. USC's not promoting Arnold Allen like they are Calvin Cater or Patty Pimlet. Mm-hmm. 
Arn Allen's a fighter. He's whooping ass. His actions speak louder than that, that shit they putting all uh, on us promotion-wise. Oh, well, believe me, Dr. Matt. When in Rome, when Arnold Allen does get near that title shot, and, you know, they, they put him in there with Cater. They know that they know he's on the precipice. They'll put the promo machine behind him. And if he wins, they win. And if he loses, they win. So, you know, at the end of the day, it doesn't really fucking matter. But again, the dark horse of the featherweight division, a huge featherweight whom me and Dr. Matt both agree could make some noise at lightweight is Arnold fucking Allen. Be on the lookout. He's coming for that belt. 